Good evening. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank the Lord for our salvation we have through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you saved us, delivered us, redeemed us, and gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. And thank you, Lord, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who did it all for us. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's look at Bibles over here in 3 John. Now, the scripture says here in verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Now, that's God's will for every believer. To re Once a person receives Jesus Christ as Lord, they become God's beloved. And we're in Christ Jesus. And we, we've been given a better covenant established on better promises. One of the benefits we have that God gave us is the abundant life, prosperity. You know, he made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. We know that because when we read Galatians, in fact, let's just go over there. In Galatians chapter 3, now the scripture says here, in, we'll start here in verse 13, 14, and read verse 29. Christ hath redeemed us and the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for his written curse is everyone in the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles of Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Now, verse 29. And if he be Christ, then are Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Now, I took that scripture when I first heard it, and I linked it up with Deuteronomy chapter 28. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through verse 14, tells us about the blessings. Moses recorded that belonged to Abraham or Abrahamic covenant. And they're all material, you know, blessed going in, blessed going out, or the head not to tail. And not only that, but he gave us everlasting life, eternal life, Jesus did through what he did, abundant life, but also he gave us divine health. It's God's will that we walk in divine health. Now, most of us didn't know that. I mean, some of us, when we first read about divine healing, that was kind of a great revelation to us at the time. But not only God wants us to receive healing if we need it, he wants us to live in a situation where we don't get sick. It almost sounds preposterous to the carnal mind. But nevertheless, it's God's will that we walk in divine health because he put our sick and diseases upon Jesus. So in our covenant, we have that through Jesus Christ, not only we have eternal life, not only we have everlasting life, and thank God for that. Hands down, that's the greatest miracle. But we also have abundant life. And Jesus made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. And all those material blessings that were in Abrahamic covenant has been transferred over into our new covenant. It's God's will that we live in prosperity. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. That's God's plan for each and every person. Just as it's God's will that everyone in this world receive Jesus Christ as Lord. That's why we have scripture like John 3, 16. So the whole world can know that God loves them so much, he wants them to receive his son, Jesus Christ. And when a person does receive Jesus Christ, Lord, whether they realize or not, not only do they just receive uh, uh, eternal life, a promise that when they pass away, they'll go, be at heaven, or go to heaven, go be at Jesus, not go to hell. But also in that covenant that we have, that most of us do nothing about, is the financial prosperity, good success, and having good health. And we need to always renew our mind to God's word about that. Because there's all these doubts and unbeliefs to come to all of us, probably on a daily basis. And what we're going to do, we're going to delete them with God's promises. And take in 3 John verse 2 and just remind ourselves constantly, consistently, that God wants me to prosper. It's his will that I prosper. How would that happen? Well, I mean, God, unless God showed us how it's going to happen, we'd have no idea. I mean, thank God for working and thank God for what we can do in the natural. But divine prosperity isn't something we earn. It's something we've been given. Well, it's like divine protection. It belongs to every believer. We call it the 91st Psalm. And what we need to realize here is that in the 91st Psalm, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, him I trust. That gets activated by us saying it, by us decreeing it, and declaring it. And taking scripture, like Psalm 30, verse 6, in my prosperity I said I shall never be moved. And having that kind of attitude and mindset, you know, when I first heard 3 John verse 2, I got me, I was so excited. I wasn't too sure if I was God's beloved. In fact, I didn't think I was. So I, that word was kind of throwing me off. But nevertheless, I'm going to learn the process of time that we're in Christ Jesus. And Jesus, he's God's beloved and we're in him. So we are God's beloved through Jesus Christ or us dwelling in Christ and Christ in us. Well, I just took that and began to say that. And I got so excited about it, I began to share with other people. I mean, just even people who are strangers. I bring that verse of scripture up. I get all kinds of challenges over this verse of scripture, especially from people's born again. 
telling me that it can't mean that. If that was God's will, everybody would have it. Well, it's God's will. Everybody received Jesus Christ as Lord. But, you know, we have a big job to get the gospel out so people can know about receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. So it took me a process of time of renewing my mind to see myself that God must be very prosperous financially and have good health, even as my soul prospers. As I renew my mind to God's word, our souls, our mind, our emotions, our intellect, it wasn't born again when we received Christ. It didn't become a new creature when we received Christ Jesus. It was our spirit man that became a new creature in Christ Jesus that made us the righteous of God in Christ. Now we all have this body that we need to always constantly keep it built up in God's word. By renewing our mind to God's word, remind ourselves God wants me to walk in hell. If any kind of physical ailment comes, that God wants me to receive healing. He's not withholding healing. It's our responsibility to take care of our body. We're going to be able to do that by constantly speaking God's word. And like reading healing scriptures every day. And reading financial scriptures every day. And going over them constantly. Just remind yourself, this is what God says. And that's why I took those scriptures there in Deuteronomy chapter 28. About, the, about being blessed going in, blessed going out. So now I don't have an excuse to, well, I live in the wrong place. If I've been living in the right place, I could be prosperous. No, it says we're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the field. So no matter where we're at, we're blessed. It's not based on where we're living at or condition. The blessing's already upon us. And now our basket's blessed. That's like when you go shopping. And we need to see ourselves that way. So often, you know, we could get, get led by prices. Well, you know, that, that costs too much. I can never have that, you know because of whatever reason it be. No, we don't talk that way. Those thoughts may come to our mind, but we need to begin to see ourselves that we're prosperous because the Word of God says we are. That's going to take God's Word. And that's why you and I, it's important for us every day to lead those doubts and unbeliefs that come to us. Constantly remind ourselves, my Father God must be prosperous. And that's where that Psalm 30 verse 6 comes in. I mean, that's excellent that we decree and declare, in my prosperity, I said I shall never be moved. I mean, think about it. who even talks this way. We all need to talk this way. We need to speak God's word always. And the first thing comes to us about any kind of doubt and unbelief is remind ourselves, what does the word say about this? And begin to delete and erase all those negative images we may have in our mind. But we're going to cast those thoughts down by resisting them by speaking God's word. This is what Jesus did when he was faced with temptation. When Satan came to him, Jesus just would respond by saying, it's written. And he quoted a verse of scripture. How about this? And all of us need to do this. Every day, taking to God's word and using our authority in the name of Jesus. And I want to encourage you, take 3 John, verse 2, and just keep saying it to yourself over and over again to begin to see yourself that God wants you to be prosperous and have good health. Really enjoy being with you tonight. Till next time, it's Brother Rich, mine. we love you, we're praying for you, and remember Jesus is always more than enough.